Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is talk about materials. So let's go ahead and advance to the next slide. So what exactly is a material? Well, you can kind of think of it as a type of paint that you can define that's going to be applied to each and every polygon face that you have. Right. Now, this allows us to do something just a little bit beyond what we've seen so far mm -hmm. in regards to applying color to a, a basically a vertex or a face. We've seen just applying simple colors. Right. We've then seen we, textures. Then we've seen textures. And now we're going to take a look at materials. What materials are going to do is allow us to define uh, extra components, if you will, basically like things like specularity, uh, the diffuse color, which can mix in with the actual texture, mm -hmm. um, shininess, et cetera, right. which gives these particular pieces of geometry we're creating a more realistic feel when compared to objects in the real world. Right. If you compare something like a metallic object to wood, they obviously one is shiny and one isn't. And with what we've learned up to now, we couldn't do that. Exactly. So basically we have materials to allow us to do that. So if you see here, we have our GL material FV and our GL material F, um, depending on whether it's an array value or scalar value, that allows us to set this. And if you look at the parameters here, we have three guys here. Um, GL enum face, which allows us to specify where we're applying the material. Right. Is it going to be the front, the back, or the front and the back? And this is just based off of the normal of the face itself. Right. If the normal's in the same direction as mm -hmm. the face, then that's going to be the front. Right. Otherwise, it's the back. Or if you want to define both at the same time, which is typically what I would do, is set the front and back. And then we have various things we can set. As we mentioned, we have our diffuse and specular. But we can also define ambient color, which kind of boosts up the overall color of it to any particular color. Then we have our GL emission, which basically allows us to simulate a texture emitting color. Right. Um, and then we can set, if you wanted to, the ambient and diffuse color at the same time so that you don't have to have two separate calls. And then finally, we have our shininess that ties kind of directly into our specular channel um, that allows us to say um, how, basically the focus, how tight our specular highlight is. And that ties directly in with our formula as we saw in our... Um, lighting lesson. That's right. You can see how each of the components that are available for parameters are, well, located down there. Right. We have our V dot R, as we talked about before. And then, of course, There's it's our, to the power of N shiny, which is so where our, our shininess. shininess yep. Right. And then that's multiplied with our constant specularity, and which is defined by GL. And right. And you can see the diffuse as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have our GL diffuse that's right here. And that's here. And our ambient is right here. Which is right here. Yeah, so you can see how you can plug all of these values into the formula. Exactly. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at some examples of this. Um, what if so, we're, yeah. Well, first of all, let me go ahead and give an intro to this. Yeah. Basically, coming up uh, pretty much by the end of this VTM, we're mm -hmm. going to show you guys how to create your own OBJ importer. Right. And then we're going to write a very simple application that's going to allow you to view the different models that you import. Right. And what we've done is we've basically brought this guy out early. We've brought the application um, into this VTM just so that you guys can see some geometry that's got some curvature to it mm -hmm. so that we can see what specularity looks like. Right, because it's really hard to see specular highlights on a cube with yeah, only not, one face. Yeah, not without going in there and manipulating the light around. And even then, it's still very difficult. Yeah. So what we've done, if uh, you want to go ahead and alt-tab over real quick. So here we are. And again, this may look a bit strange on your machine just depending on how the uh, the capture of this video is working mm -hmm. at the moment. But basically, we've got four different spheres that we've exported out of Maya, and we've got different materials applied, applied to, to each, them. Yeah. So right now, this sphere that we're looking at... Now, remember, this whole OBJ viewer, this application is something that we are actually going to write in this uh, VTM, mm -hmm. so it's pretty much at the very end. Right. So fear not, you'll be able to see how this entire thing is created, and then come back to this video if you want to, and watch it one more time, right. but I don't think that's going to be necessary because what we're going to show you is really straightforward. So no specularity. You'll notice with our yellow sphere right now that we have no hot spot, right. nothing that's shiny. Right. The whole thing kind of has a, a smooth feel to it. Yeah, it's almost like it was uh, rubber or right. um, chalk or something like mm -hmm. that. So let's go ahead and jump over there to our presentation. Not, not, oh, okay. Yes, just so that they can see what no specularity looks like. Okay. So basically here we have, we are, we're defining two arrays our, for our diffuse and our specular. And then we have two calls that set those individual ones. And you can notice that our diffuse color is set to R, 1, and G, which is 1. And then B is 0, so that's yellow. Right. And then our alpha value at the end is set to 1. And our specular component is set to 0, 0, and 0, so there's no specularity. And then we simply pass these two arrays 
to our GL material FV, applying to front and back um, the diffuse channel, sending that the diffuse array that we just defined. Sending the data. And sending the data. And our specular for the same thing, we send our specular data. That's right. Okay, so let's go ahead and alt-tab back over again. And the next one, so with specularity, you'll notice we now have a hot spot that's yep. being shown. Just so that you guys know, we've more or less simulated the light being attached to our <clears throat> camera, if you want to yeah. say there's a camera. So it's as if as we try to rotate around or anything, the light is staring straight at the object. Exactly. But we can see this hot spot now where it's hottest in the center, and it kind of bleeds out just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so we pull this off by defining specularity. So if we jump back over to our PowerPoint real quick. All right, so next slide. Bink. All right, so with specular, specular, well, you'll notice that we now have a specular component other than zero. So right. in our array, we've got 0 0.48, 0 0.48, 0 0.48. Exactly. And then we go ahead and specify the same two lines for our first ones. And then our last one, we also specify a shininess. That's right. You know, without a specular value at all, there's no reason for shininess. Right. Because... Well, you've, it's got to be specular before it can be. How specular is it? How shiny is it? Exactly. And basically, the higher the value of the shininess, the tighter your hotspot is going That's to be. That's right. So if this was like zero, as you'll see in a second, it, it bleeds out a lot. Right. So let's go ahead and alt-tab back over. And let's go back to our low shininess Which and check that out. It kind of bleeds through the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. So we've really just blown out the, the whole specularity. Uh, right. The hotspot this. covers the whole thing, right. essentially. Um, and if we just alt-tab back, just notice this number right here. Goes that to changed zero. to zero, and then you get what we saw just a second ago. So finally, um, we also have our transparency. So let me just yeah, have just a so that you guys can at least see this. Now, right now, it looks like it just basically darkened. yeah darkened, or, or dimmed down, if you will. Mm -hmm. And what's going on is just the simple fact that our background is black. So right. now we're able to see through our sphere, and with the back background, it just ends up looking like our yellow got a bit dimmer. Yeah. Um, so how does this work? Well, we, this is the first time we've seen blending. Right. And this is where transparency comes into play. So like we've seen with lighting and texturing, you need to first enable it. Because by default, we haven't had any blending whatsoever. So the first thing you need to do is enable blending with a GL enable, un, um, parentheses GL underscore blend. And that enables blending. And you can, as with all of, our, uh, all of the GL lighting and GL textures, we can enable it or disable it any time in your application, and all is good. Right. Um, and once you've defined blending, you can define how it's going to blend between it. And a really good function where we can define how it blends with a GL blend func. And the default, which is really good for specifying transparency that, that you see in the real world, is with uh, GL source alpha and GL1 minus source alpha. So how does this work? Um, basically, the first parameter is your source factor, mm -hmm. and the second parameter is your destination factor. So think of it this way. The source factor is how much you want to take what you're about to draw. So let's say we're drawing our sphere that's yellow, and uh, that's yellow, right? So right. you have RGB component of 110. Um, and then you have a transparency of, let's say, 0.4, mm -hmm. right? So if you took the alpha of that, so multiply your alpha by your yellow, which would give you 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0. Right. And then your destination factor, let's say you're drawing this yellow sphere with 0.4 transparency onto a red background. Your 1 minus source alpha would take 1 minus 0 0.4, so that would give you 0 0.6, and R is simply 1, 0, 0. Multiply 0 0.6 by 1, 0, 0 would give you 0 0.6, 0, 0. 0. Right. And then you multiply that back with your um, yellow, and then what you would get is 0 0.600 0 added on to 0 0.4, 0 0.40, and that would be the your right color. Yeah, exactly. Simulate. It would blend them two That's together. Right. And the, the big thing here is, for those of you that are completely new to the concept, is with transparency, you'll notice that the 0.4 value on the GL float diffuse where we're setting that uh, array, the very last value, that mm -hmm. 0 0.4. We've always been uh, setting our alpha to a value of 1. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time you see the lower alpha, and that's what's responsible yeah. for setting the transparency, basically. Right, and, and as we saw before, we have our GL color 3F. If we use GL color 4F, we could also define the transparency that way. That's right. And then finally, we just have the same as we had before for our GL materials, and that's all there is Yeah, it's really it. straightforward. Yeah. So with that, that's pretty much all we want to talk about. We're going to be visiting this again when we get into the OBJ importer, mm -hmm. because obviously being able to bring in materials is important. Very important. So with that, that is going to wrap up this brief introduction to materials. Thanks a lot.